Good morning, good morning, good morning. God bless you. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad. God bless you. God bless you. This Thank you so much for joining us and tuning in to today's prayer call. We a little different this morning. Aisha is on vacation, so Danita and I will be going forth in prayer today and ministry today. As you're coming on, if you could be so kind and hit that share button, allowing someone else to see and hear the prayer. Amen. Allowing someone else to see and hear the prayer this morning. We're going to be coming from um, Isaiah 58, starting at verse 6 on down to 11. Verse 6 to verse 11. This is the scripture where we will be sharing in this morning for our fast. For those of you who are participating with our fast, for those of you who have on the prayer call yesterday or also connected to my Facebook, I shared that we will be fasting starting today. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm going to go ahead on and dial us in. And when I dial us in, we're going to go ahead and get started. As you're coming to the line this morning, if you could be so kind and let us know where you are tuning in from. Amen. Amen. Let us know where you are tuning in and you are chiming in from. Good morning. I see Georgia. We have Georgia. Good morning from North Carolina. Good morning from Georgia. God bless you. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. New Jersey is on. Good morning. Good morning. God bless you. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning. I see Florida is on this morning. Good morning. God bless you. Thank you so much for joining us. South Carolina is on this morning. All right. All right, Danita, you can go ahead on my sister. Amen. Praise God. So excited to be here with you guys on a Monday. Um, God is good. Um, I'm going to go ahead and um, read the Bible verse this morning, uh, which is Isaiah 58 verses 6 through 11. And as my sister said, we are kicking off our fast this morning and we are standing on this word right here. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm reading from the New Living Translation. And again, it's Isaiah 58 verses six through 11. And it reads, no, this is the kind of fast I want. Free those who are wrongfully in prison, lighten the burden of those who work for you. Let the oppressed go free and remove the chains that bind people. Share your food with the hungry and give shelter to the homeless. Give clothes to those who need them and do hide from and do not hide from relatives who need your help. Then your salvation will come like the dawn and your wounds will quickly heal. Your godliness will lead you forward and the glory of the Lord will protect you from behind. Then when when you call the Lord then when you call, the Lord will answer. Yes, I am here. He will quickly reply. Remove the heavy yoke of oppression. Stop pointing your finger and spreading rumors, vicious rumors. Feed the hungry and help those in trouble. Then your light will shine out from the darkness and the darkness around you will be as bright as noon. The Lord will guide you continually giving you water when you are dry and restoring your strength. You will be like a well-watered garden, like an ever-flowing spring. And again, that is Isaiah 58, verses 6 through 11, which is the verse that we're standing on um, this morning as we um, start our fast. One thing about it, whenever you go on a fast, there should be something um, that you should be believing God for and standing in prayer for. So we're fasting and believing that heavy yokes um, are going to be um, 
released, right? That people are going to be set free. People are going to experience breakthroughs, miracles. And that's what we're standing on this morning. So I'm excited. Um, God is doing some amazing, amazing things in this season. And um, I do believe that as we um, go into our fast and we, you know, make a decision to fast and to really pray, get in God's word during this time of consecration, that the fire of God is going to come down and uh, we're going to be purified. We're going to receive fresh oil, fresh fire. Um, and I'm just so excited about it. And um, and that just segues into what I wanted to um, talk about this morning. And this it just really blessed me, y'all, because we are just in a season where God is just doing some miraculous things. And I had to actually sit back on um, Saturday. Y'all know we had our grand opening of our second location. And so I was talking to, um, we have a group chat amongst our business partners. And I put in a group chat, I was like, you know what, y'all, you can't tell me that God is not real because we opened a whole restaurant during the pandemic, number one, when restaurants were being closed, we opened the restaurant during the pandemic. That's number one. Then number two, in less than two years, we've opened up a second location. And you cannot tell me that God is not real. And we give him all the glory. Um, the way that God set it up, it, it's him. It had to be him. We're not restauranteers. Right? Like this isn't something that we have... Um, aspired to be for years that we are real estate people but god is like you know what i need you to go into i need this you to have this territory and um one of the things that we did and we didn't film it or anything but i just want to um just um tell you guys about it because i think it will bless you on saturday morning before um our um grand opening celebration which was at noon but saturday morning we all met at our current location at like 8 30 in the morning and we decided that we were going to just pray um over that location and then we were going to do a prayer walk and just walk from that location to our other location just we just going all down the street just speaking in tongues just praying like we didn't care like somebody even got saved as we were walking um somebody actually accepted christ into their lives so we just took the territory. I mean, I just, we just felt the need that God was saying, you know, I need you to dedicate this whole territory to me. And that is what we did. And I believe in this season, this is what God is doing for the believers. He's given us territory. And um, we have to, be, number one, we have to be good stewards over it. Um, and we have to give it right back to him because it's not ours, it's his. But he's just putting us as managers over it, um, you know, in this season. So in this season, God, guys, God is doing some amazing things and the fire. And that's the, the title of my message this morning is the fire of God. So as I was just reflecting on all that this morning, the Bible verse that Holy Spirit sent to me was First um, Kings chapter 18. And I'm kind of just skipping around. This is the story where Elijah um, basically proved to the people that his God was real because he called on God and God sent the fire from heaven, right? And I'm just gonna, y'all, I gotta get, we gonna get into this word today. And the good thing about it is just me and Lanika, so we got time today, right? We gotta get into this word because I need y'all to see this is the type of thing um, that God is doing in this season. He's showing um, his people and he's showing everybody, even the people who are not his people, who he is and that he is God and um, that his fire, um, will come down and he's going to, and he is going to get the glory. So let me just start off. I'm in first Kings chapter 18 and, um, I'm going to start here at verse 20. It says, Ahab summoned all the people of Israel and the prophets to Mount Carmel. Then Elijah stood in front of them and said, how much longer will you waver hobbling between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, then follow him. But the people were completely silent. So let me skip down. Now I'm going to go to, um, uh, let's see, where am I? Okay, here we are. I'm going to go to verse 26, still in, in chapter 18, 1 Kings. He says, 
Um, so they prepared one of the bulls and placed it on the altar. Then they called on the name of Baal from morning until noontime, shouting, O oh, Baal, answer us. Then there was no reply of any kind. So basically, y'all, Elijah is telling the people, I'm going to prove to you that your God is not real and my God is real. And he told them to get a bull. He had a bull and they had a bull. And he said, you can choose whichever bull you want. Cut it up. Lay it on the altar. Don't set fire to it. Let's call on. Everybody's going to call on their God. And let's see who brings the fire down to, to um, burn this bull. Then um, it says, oh, Baal, answer us. But there was no reply of any kind. Then they danced, hobbling around the altar they, that they had made. About noontime, Elijah began mocking them. You'll have to shout louder, he scoffed, for surely he is a god. Perhaps he is daydreaming or is relieving himself, or maybe he is away on a trip or is asleep and needs to be awakened. So they shouted louder and following their normal custom, they cut themselves with knives and swords until the blood gushed out. Now you got to do all of that <laughs> to get your God to answer you. <laughs> Y'all, I love this story. It is so good. Then it says they raved all afternoon until the time of the evening sacrifice, but still there was no sound, no reply, no response. Then Elijah called to the people, come over here. They all crowded around him as he repaired the altar of the Lord that had been torn down. He took 12 stones, one to represent each of the tribes of Israel. Let me just stop right here, though. You see how Elijah called over to the people. He said, come over here. Let me show you something. I believe in this season, that is, that's what God is doing, y'all. He's taking his people, the ones who believe, the ones who are obedient. He's going to put you in positions where you're going to show people who the God is that you serve. You're going to show people what your God is doing and can do. And it's going to draw them to Christ. So he says he took 12 stones, one to represent each of the tribes of Israel. And he used the stones to rebuild the altar in the name of the Lord. Then, oh, he took it even a step further. He dug a trench around the altar large enough to hold about three gallons. He piled wood on the altar, cut the bull into pieces, and laid the pieces on the wood. Then he said, y'all, Elijah is gangster. He said, fill four large jars with water and pour the water over the offering and the wood. After they had done this, he said, do the same thing again. He said, do it again. And when they were finished, he said, now do it a third time. So they did as he said, and the water ran around the altar and even filled the trench. At the usual time for offering the evening sacrifice, Elijah the prophet walked up to the altar and prayed, O oh Lord, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, prove today that you are God in Israel and that I am your servant. Prove that I have done all this at your command. O oh Lord, answer me, answer me so these people will know that you, O oh Lord, are God and that you have brought them back to yourself immediately. Y'all type in the chat immediately, immediately. The fire of the Lord flashed down from heaven and burned up the young bull, the wood, the stones, and the dust. It even licked up all the water in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell face down on the ground and cried out, the Lord, he is God. Yes, the Lord is God. Y'all, let me tell y'all, I get so excited about this word because it's the fire of God. And one of the things that really, um, it's a few things I want to point out here. Number one, y'all see that he put water. Y'all, you know, you can't start a fire when there's water. Not only did he do it once, twice, he did it three times. He said, nah, put some more water on that thing. Cause I need y'all to know that my God is real. Put some more water on it. He was just, he was so sure. And so he had so much faith in knowing, I know, that when I call on the name of the Lord, when I call on God, he hears me and he answers my prayers. And just the, the fact that he had that much faith, he's like, Lord, I'm going to show these people today. They're going to learn today that you are 
the one and true living God, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And that is what God is doing in this season, y'all. He's setting us apart and he's putting us in positions to where people are going to be like, how in the world did they do that? It wasn't us, y'all. It was God. It's the God that we serve, the one and only true living God. And so then the other thing I want to point out, when, when God sent the fire from heaven, and it says he sent the fire from heaven, it says the young bull, it says that it burned up the young bull, the wood, the stones, and the dust. It even licked up all the water. And one of the things that Holy Spirit was showing me this morning is that there are some things that happens when the fire of God comes down. One of the things is that it purifies you. So when that fire came down, it licked up all the dust. Everything was gone. Like the fire purifies you. And we need to be purified in order to go to the next level. In order to be used by God, you have to be purified, right? The other thing that the fire of God does is when the fire of God comes, y'all, miracles are birthed, right? That was a miracle. The fact that fire came down from heaven and was able to burn up and to burn up the bull, the dust and all of that, even and even lick up water. Where is that possible? That is impossible, right? So the fire of God births miracles. And then the other, the last thing that Holy Spirit gave me is that the fire of God, it saves souls. So as those people were witnesses of what God did that day, they had no, they, it touched their hearts and all they could do was to bow down and, and say, you know what? We believe we do want to be saved and that we want to follow you, God. You are the one true living God. And so in this season, y'all, God is really doing these type of miracles. This is the same God that we serve, the same God that brought that fire down from heaven um, as Elijah called on him is the same God that we serve. And I just want y'all to be reminded that God is doing some amazing things in this season. And just with me, um, you know, just my testimony with our cafe and how he's really blessing us. And this is just the beginning, y'all. We're looking for other locations. We're going to, we. our goal is to have Wall Street Cafe on every corner. Just like you see Starbucks, you're going to see Wall Street Cafe um, everywhere and to even expand. And I know that God is going to do that for us. And this is the type of miracles that are going to be happening um, in this season. I want y'all to really go back and read. I just kind of skipped through it, but go back and read the whole entire story. First Kings chapter 18 um, is such an amazing story and it's so powerful. I love um, so another thing that we can learn from this too is the faith that Elijah had. I mean, he really showed um, his faith. He knew that God heard him. He knew um, that God was going to show himself um, for him in front of all those people. That's the type of faith that moves the heart of God. And that's the type of faith that when you call on him, um, he's definitely going to answer you and he's going to answer your prayers. And whatever it is that he's calling you to in this season, y'all, Pray and ask God to send the fire of God um, to bless it, to purify you, um, to birth miracles in your life. And because of people seeing these things that are happening in your life, it's going to cause people to, to be drawn closer to God and to be drawn to God. Souls are going to be saved and lives are going to be changed because of your obedience. So I'm super excited about the fast because I know that some breakthroughs are going to happen. People are going to be set free and God is going to do some amazing things in this season. So I thank you guys for allowing me to share and I'm going to go ahead and pass the call over to my beautiful sister, Lanika. Amen. Powerful, 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 such powerful words this morning. Yes, we need the fire of God. We need the fire of God. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to go ahead and turn this down. I've been listening to this worship song on YouTube. It's such a powerful um, song, Yeshua, Jesus Image. Maybe I'll post it. You heard it, You heard it, Demeter? Oh, okay. I thought you said something. Um, God is so good. And just congratulations. I'm so proud of Demeter and what he is doing in her life, a business partner's life, and and I believe that it is something that he is 
wanting and desire to do. I'm not saying that everybody will have a, a Wall Street cafe, but I do believe that, you know, in this hour, he has given us the power to take territory, right? So so if you want to pray in your business and your company, you can do it. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah, right? <laughs> I love it. Right? So, you know, gold would be the days where but we can't do that in here. Yes, we can. Hallelujah. Because Jesus, Jesus gave me this place, right? This territory to occupy the territory. So I'm going to read um, Joel 2 this morning, and I'm going to just talk a little bit about some of the things that God was um, very simple and practical things that he was sharing with me as it pertains to the fast. Um, before I read this morning, for those of you who are just getting on for the first time, you had no idea that we were fasting. All of us are not on social media the same, um, so we can't um, you know, expect that everybody may have seen things. A lot of times we typically do when we get on these platforms. You didn't see that? No, I didn't see it. <laughs> so basically, we are starting a fast today. And so we will be going into three for those who, um, you know, may, may not be uh, like your, your fasting muscles hadn't been strengthened as much or until six o'clock. We typically in this household, when we fast, we'll typically do like a six to six fast. Sometimes we'll do it into three o'clock. And so I felt the Lord leading me to fast and I've had no intentions on mentioning the fast with my prayer ministry audience, I didn't. But on Friday, I feel like the Holy Spirit said, invite the people to go on a fast with you. I said, okay, that's good. And I started to feel a stirring in my spirit that it was needed, that God had also been calling his people as well, right? I wasn't the only one. He's, you know, come, consecrate yourselves unto me and go on a fast. So when I did it, there was a stirring that occurred. And last night I went live for a few minutes after texting one of my, my coaching clients messaged me on Instagram and she said, I saw your message in the coaching group because I posted it everywhere that I could and I'm going to fast. And, it's, and I said, this will be good for you. And when I did it, I felt this huge snake, this thing just fell in the spirit. And I knew that it wasn't just for her, but I felt like this is for God's people. He is going to remove some things. He is going to clear the debris. Let us go on over to Joel 2, and we're going to start in verse, verse 15. So Joel 2, verse 15, it says, Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children and those that suck the breast, let the bridegroom go forth in his chamber, and the bride out of her closet. Let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar, and let them say, Spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thine inheritance to reproach, that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, Where is there a God? Then will the Lord be jealous for his land and pity his people. Yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send corn and wine and oil, and you shall be satisfied therewith, and I will make you no more a reproach among the heathen. But I will remove far off from you the northern army, and I will drive him into a land barren and desolate with his face toward the east sea. And his hinder parts toward the utmost sea, and his stink shall come up, and his ill savior shall come up, because he has done great things. Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the fields, for, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring, for the tree bear her fruit, the fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to you to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. And the floor shall be full of wheat, and the vats shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore 
unto you the years that the locusts have eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar, my great army which I sing among you. Hallelujah. And you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I have, who, 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 how many of you all, this word is just ministering to you. Like it is ministering to me and ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord, your God and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. This is Joel too. And it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young, see, that's that scripture right here in Joel 2. Your young men shall see visions. And upon the servants of the handmaidens in those days will I pour out my spirit. And I will show wonders in the earth and the um Blood, fire, pillars of smoke, the sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord, they shall be delivered. So in this passage of scripture, we see what God is calling his people to fast. That is one. If you go on down and read, you'll see that deliverance took place, right? There was, there was another thing that God did that as the people of God consecrated themselves and they went on a fast, deliverance took place, but also restoration, re restoration took place, but then also the outpouring of the spirit of God. Hallelujah. So I believe that there's going to be some deliverance that's going to take place. Hallelujah. In your life this week, as you consecrate yourself to fast, glory be to God. And even afterwards, there's going to be some deliverance that is going to take place in your life. There's going to be some things that are going to be restored to you. Hallelujah. That's what he said. I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten. The canker worm is all in this passage of scripture where they started fasting. They went on a fast. They set themselves apart. There was a, also an outpouring of the spirit of God who need God to refuel them, right? Who need to be recharged? I believe we talked about that even some last night and even on Friday, right? Consecration, consecrate yourself. Consecrate meaning to devote yourself to the Lord. It means to dedicate yourself, right? It means to set yourself apart, set aside for something special, right? And often higher end, we're going to set ourselves aside to God. That's what we're going to do. Fasting. What does fasting means? It means to cover the mouth. That is what fasting means in the Hebrew. In the Greek, it means to abstain from food. Okay. It means to cover their mouth of the same from food. Spiritual fasting in the Bible represented setting aside a specific time where one will abstain from food or liquids and refrain from eating certain foods and drinking certain liquids to focus on spiritual growth. All right. It can also be a catalyst to receiving answered prayers. All right. It can be a catalyst to receiving answered prayers. Just as, and I'm just reading a little bit out of my book right now, just to kind of set a foundation. Um, just as a natural fast purifies the blood, the body, and the organs, a spiritual fast purifies the soul, right? Which consists of the mind, the will, and the emotions. And as a result, the sinful world in which we live, our flesh by nature, draws is drawn towards sin. Our mind many times is drawn toward the negative and our will wants what it wants. It wants what it's pleasing, but the fasting disciplines our flesh, right? To yield to the spirit of the Lord. And thus our mind, will and emotions, right? The soul realm come under subjection to the mind of Christ. That's what we want. Meaning God's will, his plans for our lives. Okay. So his mind, his will, his emotion, and intellect. Now, so now we put that first. Oh, hallelujah. When, when we begin to fast, let me put on some worship music right here. Let me put on some worship music. I just felt the shift when I said his will, glory. We, we, we reverence you, Lord Jesus. We do, because I know that you're going to do some great things in your people that are people who are needing breakthrough. They're needing answers to prayer 
they're needing some things shifted and some things turned around in their personal lives. They got some things that are even in disarray. There is, you know, fog is what I'm sensing, clouds, hallelujah, a fog that, you know, has come in and settled in in your home, and you need that stuff cleared away. And so one thing that God had did was giving me very simple instructions that we're going to do, all right? I'm going to be doing them as well. My husband and I, we're going to be doing them as well. So he wants you to uninterrupted time of worship, all right? All right, so write that down. Uninterrupted time of worship, where it's just you and God, or even, you know, you and your, your spouse, your children, just worshiping God. All right, we're going to put down the phone, so we're just going to worship God. We're just going to get into his presence. We're just going to worship him. We're going to pour out our love, yeah, toward him. We're going to remind him, hallelujah, of who he is in our life. We're just going to love on our Father. We're going to love on Jesus and the precious Holy Spirit. So we're going to reverence them. Amen. So time of worship, one. Number two, set the atmosphere of your home through worship and then also the word. Many times, even what we do here, and for those of you who've been following me, you've heard me share this so many different times. We will have worship on during the night when we are at bed, even if it's very low. Worship plan in the home and the, or also the word, okay, plan. So you're going to set the atmosphere of your home through worship and also the word so that those holy portals can open up, right? And so during times when, um, when, when we are in sin or maybe we're not close to God, there's some demonic things that will begin to come up and settle in. Strongholds can be formed, all right? But we want the opposite. We want the presence of God to enter in. We want his kingdom to come, right? As that's what the word tells us in Matthew 6, verse 9 through 13, the Lord's prayer. Your kingdom come, right? We want his kingdom to come in our midst. We want to experience God. So this is an experience in God time. It is an experience in God fast. So number one, you're going to worship, create the time when you're going to worship. Number two, set the atmosphere of your home through worship and also the word. Number three, spend time in the word. So you're going to spend time reading the Bible, all right? This is another thing that the Lord had been, you know, um, I just had been feeling in my my spirit. He's going to like, Lanika, pull out the Bible. Yes, the phone apps and all of those things are good. They have the word. But many of us have gotten away from that, even when we go to church oftentimes. You know, they say, pull out the word, and we're on the phones, and we, we got to get back to to just some things. I I believe, I, I do, I, I believe that there's something on these holy pages, hallelujah. Not that the Bible apps and those things don't work, it's, it's not that, but there are certain times, hallelujah, because I felt the Holy Spirit, and it really was Father, like, get into the, the paper word, right? So spend time in your word. Number three, you're going to spend time in prayer, okay? That is number four. So number one, time of worship. Number two, you're going to set the atmosphere of your home through worship and the word. Three, spending time in the word. Four, spending time in prayer, all right? So another thing that I would encourage you to do is also time praying in the spirit. For those of you who are baptized with the evidence of speaking in tongues, so time praying in the spirit. That's number five. Number six, I want you to put on the armor of God, right? Number six, put on the armor of God every single day. So you're going to put on the helmet, right? The sword of the spirit, the breastplate, right? Your shoes, the belt, you're going to put on the whole armor of God. You can find that in Ephesians 6, where it talks about the whole armor of God. And then also number seven, here's one thing that I want you to do. I want you to, if you have not gotten like a, I see like Danita's writing right now as a minister. If you've not gotten a prayer journal or like a spiritual notebook where you carry with you, where you're writing down things, get one today. Go to the store. You can go to the grocery store, Target, Walmart, or something like that. Get one and let this be 
for you because in this, I want you as you are going through the fast to also document this time. You're going to document some of the things that the Lord is speaking to you during this time. Okay. And write those things down. I believe there's going to be some spiritual instructions, some instructions from heaven that will come to you for you and your household during this time. Also, I want you to write down like your prayer petitions, write them down also in this journal um, and, or, or notebook, write them down the things that you are believing God for, whether it's family members, it could be a new job, a new position, healing, you know, people of which really we all should have someone on the list, you know, God, they save their souls, right? Somebody to get saved, whatever it is, a business, um, a ministry, a book, whatever. Just write down the prayer petitions because you want to look back and you're going to see that God is going to answer these prayers. God is going to move. Yes, he is. He is going to move. And so another thing that I want you to do is during this time, I want you to um, really take note to what God is wanting you to do. Okay. So there have been some things that he has instructed you to do that you have not done them. You have to repent and get it done and even pray, you know, say, God, break all it because it could be fear. Sometimes we don't do things because we just are afraid to move. Break the fear. Break the fear off of me. Break the fear off of me. Right. So, 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 so even those things. What is God telling you to do? All right. What is God telling you to do? I'm going to be transparent. And a lot of times I do these types of things because I really want people can see God's hand on my life. They can, right? Even people who may not be following him, they say, okay, the, the hand of God is on her life. So it's, it's some stuff right there. There's been some fruit there. She did something right so I'm, so I want to be transparent. A lot of times when I do things, I bring them before the people <coughs> so that they can see how I move and flow and operate. So a few months ago, the God, it was God, the father I was in my um, prayer chair writing and, um, he was giving me some stuff and I was just writing it down as I was hearing him. And he said that, that, that grateful line that I gave you that you gave to your daughters. He said, pick it up again, because I gave it to you. So during the pandemic, I heard the word grateful. And when I heard the word grateful, it just, I just got really a spirit of joy in my spirit. Right. And so I was, I sent over to my designer, this logo, I'm going somewhere here, y'all. So I sent over to her, uh, the name It's just one word, one word logo with my brand script that's all it is right but it's written out grateful with f-u-l-l -L, right so g-r-a-t-e-f-u-l-l -L. so i'm grateful right so it's a little different so i we had given it i had given it to the girls i said you all go forth with this we're gonna do some t-shirts and then first launching that and there'll be some other things well it's just been taking too long and so a few months ago, the father got on me, y'all. He was like, I put this in your bosom and you released it to your girls, which was good. But I need you to pick this thing back up so it can get out there into the earth. And I was like, whoo. So I started repenting. And so this thing had been on me just so strong. Right? So we'll be launching it in a couple of weeks from now. So you'll see it out there. But the father was so, so, it was, this was so important to him. And I was even sharing with Greg yesterday when I got some of the t-shirts, was just looking at some of the, the different colors and I was just feeling, I could feel the father. Like he was just so like the father of God, right? Abba wasn't the Holy spirit. It was the father and he, it wasn't Jesus. It was the father. And I said, Whoa, he really want this thing. And so we had been dragging our feet with it. And I was like, we got to obey you, God. And we got to get this thing launched. And what he was sharing with me, he shared it just like this. I, I wish I had my thing in here. It's in my bedroom where I can look at the exact words that he shared. He said, it doesn't have to be perfect right now, Lanika, but just get it out. Just execute it. 
And as I was thinking about it yesterday, I, was, I could feel that he was excited about what he was telling me he wanted done. But the reality of a thing, it's didn't been too long, right? And so it's probably has held up some things. I'm like, no, we don't, we want all the things that God has for us. We want the blessings. A few months ago, God told me, and we was going through horrendous warfare. And there's a book that's called Supernatural Wealth Transfer that I was to release. And he said, Lanika, get the book done. If you don't get it done, then, then I'm going to get somebody else to get it done. I'm like, oh, no, you won't. I started repenting, and I was like, God, give me the strength to, to get this stuff done because you want it done in the earth ram. You want this book out there. You want it done. So, so I've got to move some things off of my plate, move some things off of my schedule, move some things uh, uh, that I had on my personal agenda so that I can obey God because this is what he wants. When I was writing this book and he said, get this book done, this is an end time book. The love of wealth that I have for you will not be released to you or your family until you get it done. This was 2013, for those of you who maybe just start following me. And then right after the book was released, through a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, right? Figuratively speaking, the level of wealth that he had for us, it was sent and it was released. And so there are some things that may be held back because of your disobedience or delay in some things. And this isn't a bash anybody because the reason why I said, let me be transparent and put myself out there because I need you to understand these are some of the things and ways that I operate. And I say, oh, wait a minute. We, I got to do what, and he may have us doing other things, but what is priority on his heart? And that's what I want you to write down. God, what is it that's priority on your heart? What is it that is important right now for you? Oh, hallelujah. God, what is it that's important to you right now that I need to be executing, carrying out, and doing for your glory? Amen? So you're going to do it? So you're going to ask God, you know, God, what is it that I need to be doing? Like, what is it, God, that maybe you told me to do that I just didn't do? He's going to bring it back to your remembrance. He is, he is. Last night I was talking to Greg and I said, five, we're fasting for five days. And I said, oh, that's grace. I said, oh my God, he has given us grace to fast. He has given us the grace to fast. Write down your prayer points, your prayer petitions. Write down those things that he wants you to do. You got to revisit them. A lot of times we don't go in, we don't go in, we don't go in because of disobedience. Even in the small things, we may be thinking, that's small, God, but it is huge to him because there is a purpose, there is a plan. Write them down. We're going to obey God. We're going to surrender to God. There's another level of surrenderance that he's requiring of me to. He's been saying, daughter, come up. You need to ascend, which means go up, come up higher. There's more that I want to show you. Yes, I've done a lot in your life, Lanika. I'm talking to somebody else. I'm helping somebody else. But there's way more that I have for you, Danita. Do you hear what she said? We got two. Now we want them on every street. There's that He's done two right now. But there's way more. We've got to surrender. We've got to go up. There's more, hallelujah, that he wants for you, that he has for you. For those of you who have already written books, you think God is going to stop right there? There are more books that you have to birth. For those of you who have started businesses, you started one business. You think that's all that God has? There are more businesses. But he want to see, let me see if you're going to be faithful with the one. Faithful over few, I'll make you ruler over much. You need the stamina, hallelujah. You need to be fortified, hallelujah, in your spirit. You need to be strengthened in your inner man. Come on, I believe somebody to, to say even with me, Father, we repent of sin. I need you to say, refuel me, God. 
set me on fire. Danita talked about the fire of God. I just felt fire just come down right here like it just went down. Set me on fire. Hallelujah. Speak to my heart, Lord. Refresh me. Restore my passion for you. Hallelujah. The things of God. He said, come back. Return to your first love. Yes, we're going to go back to him. We're going to seek him. Hallelujah. In this hour. Yes. The presence of the Lord. Respecting the presence of the Lord. Respecting the holy presence of God. Well, we long for the presence of God. Well, we long to feel him touch us. Well, he, we long, you, you long to feel him touch you. You long to feel him, yes, stirring up on the inside of you. The wells, hallelujah. The Holy Spirit. The Bible even referenced deep call of unto deep. Showing you the mysteries, hallelujah, revealing some things unto you, releasing unto you some downloads from heaven. May the glory of the Lord be able to enter in and even, and even penetrate areas of your heart, areas of your soul. I thank you right now where the word talks about the word going in. It is a divider, piercing down, hallelujah, to the depthness even of our soul. Glory be to God. There's some things in your emotions that God wants to heal. He wants to pull out. And even as you consecrate and dedicate yourself back to him during this time and this season, he is going to do just that. He's going to reach down, hallelujah, into those cells and pull the debris out, pull the junk out. I hear you, Father, the contamination out, the poison, the venom that has even been set in, even due to witchcraft and even snakes. He corrosed. And I also see, and we did this yesterday. I got up yesterday morning. I said, well, I got to change the sheets to my bed. Some of you may have heard me talk about that. Change the sheets to your bed. You're going to put fresh uh, pillowcases on that bed, fresh sheets, right? So go ahead and do that. I'm um, even wash the comforter. Take some time to do this. A lot of these types of things, some things that you do in the natural, they also help in the spirit around They clean the atmosphere, all right? You, you need your atmosphere clean and also shift it. Hallelujah. If you also have essential oils, they also do help. Now, I'm not going to do an essential oil study because I'm in prayer this morning, but even the essential oils, Oils like frankincense and myrrh, they do things even in the spirit realm and also in the body. If you have some of those, because I just saw that, right? I was like, oh, really? And then I saw it again. The Lord said, yeah, even with the air, cleaning the air. There are different things that will invite the angels in. Hallelujah. Yes, the angel is going to minister to you. And I pray God is going to give you dreams. He's going to give you visions. And he's going to give you downloads and revelations during this time. So Father, we thank you again. I know I've kind of talked, ministered, prayed all at the same time, but we just believe you. We trust you. I pray for your people. Come on, let them feel a touch from, from you this morning. Let them feel from heaven this morning. Oh God, touch them. Many of your people, yes, I, I hear you, Lord. You said that they've been going through. I'm hearing even bouts of depression. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, God, that you're going to bring freedom and liberty to their minds. Yes. I feel like a large yoke right here. Hallelujah. I feel a large yoke right here. God is even speaking um, concerning depression and also suicide. He is going to break. There's going to be deliverance. Hallelujah. Deliverance that's going to come forth. Yes, many of you have been under such spiritual attack. Oh, and you needed this. And some of you say, I needed this. And I just praise you, Lord Jesus, for you meeting them. Oh, I see you, Jesus, even stepping in. And I see a vision of the Lord Jesus himself. He's stepping in. Yes. He is stepping in for you. He's been interceding for you. Yes. Many of you, you've not lost it because he has been interceding for you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes, he's going to visit you. He's going to visit you. Yes, 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 yes. He's going to release his spirit and visit you. 
even as I see people spending even the time in the word, there's going to be some supernatural occurrences. There's going to be some supernatural experiences. Lord, we thank you. Hallelujah. Lord, we just glorify you. Oh, Lord, we thank you. And also, during this time, I pray, you know, I want you to repent. This is wisdom. Repent on behalf of the bloodline, like for different sins. There may be some things that um, he will show you that is affecting you uh, where you didn't open up the door, but somebody in your bloodline did. So now that thing has a legal right to do so. So you're going to bring it before the Lord um, in repentance. Amen. So I repent on behalf of the sins of my bloodline. And if it's something specifically, you can bring that before him. Glory. Refresh your people, Lord. They need you, God. They need breakthrough. Your people need breakthrough, God. They need breakthrough, God. They need some things turned around, God. Give it to them. The grace and the strength, Lord. Yes, 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 yes. To overcome in the name of Jesus. Give it to the Lord. The strength and the grace to overcome. That's why it's called breakthrough because it is breaking through something. Breaking through, right? So you're pushing through. That's why it's called breakthrough. You're breaking through. And you're going to break through in the spirit realm. I'm going to also be praying on tomorrow night, Wednesday night, Thursday night. And then because I'm going live today, and then on Friday, I'll be praying during that time. But I'll come on real quick. We're going to touch and agree. We're going to pray. It's going to be on my page. It's going to be also in the group just for us to touch and agree. And also join forces and we lock arms in the spirit. It's powerful when you come together in unity. Hallelujah to do some things. So I believe that the angels of fire are going to be sent out. Yes, the, there are angels who bring deliverance, you all. They are they're scribe angels, angels to bring um, um, messages from heaven to help you with your writing. They're messenger angels where they speak to you. They're carrier angels, even the ones that release the feathers, right? They're carriers, the ones that release the stones in the gym. They're angels of hope. The angels, God just said, start talking about the angels. Angels of hope, they, they give you hope to keep on going. They're angels, ministering angels. They minister to you, right? They minister to you. They're ministering angels. The Bible says, are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to the heirs, those that pretty much have inherited salvation? They're angels, hallelujah, that come in and stir. I just saw a, like a stirring. They begin to start the, the stirring, you know, where the angel went down and the, the stir. Did not you remember that one, the well, <laughs> the water? They start to stir up the move of God, hallelujah, in your life. They're angels. And so, so even that, be open to the ministry of angels during this time. They're angels of provision. They're angels of wealth. Right, one oftentimes will come and stand right here on my my right side. There are angels of wealth, there are angels of abundance and provision that will come. They help unlock that stuff for you, that stuff that have been held up. Right, they go after your stuff, the things that are rightfully yours. So we're gonna also invite the angels in, even if you do not understand them. We understand, even if we don't, un we understand the demons. We bind that in Jesus' name. No, we invite the holy angels to come in. Hallelujah. The holy portals be open so that the angels of the Lord to come in. They're angels of healing. They, they bring the, the, hallelujah, the healing presence of God to heal the, the sickness, to take out the sickness. They, they've been angels that will, that will come to, to, to demolish cancer, to pull it on out. So I want you to also be open to the ministry of angels during this time as they come in and they help you. The angels that will help guide you in certain areas. Amen. Bay, can you get that book for me? Let me see my angel book. Is it one in here? Oh, it's one here. My angel book is in the, uh, there's a scripture and then we're gonna go off. Is one is in the great room on the table. Thanks so much. My husband is, is always such a blessing to me. That scripture, I, I want you all to just hang there. That's the scripture that I have. The God said, I want you to read this to the people. There's a scripture, yep. And he, it's some wisdom in the scripture for you. 
and then we're going to go ahead and go home but invite the angels yep some of them going to speak to you at night you're going to feel them nearby um they'll they'll touch you many times they'll touch you just to, 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 to bring you to, you know to, to pray so i want you to invite the angels amen let me see if i can find the scripture thank you lord we thank you oh glory glory we give you praise we do in the um book of exodus in exodus 23 verse 20 through 23 it says see i am sending an angel before you to protect you on your journey and lead you to safety to the place that i have prepared for you the, the Bible says, pay close attention to him, to this angel, and obey his instructions. Do not rebel against him, for he is my representative, and he will not forgive your rebellion. But if you are careful to obey, and this is the part we're going to do, we're going to obey, following all of my instructions, then I will be an enemy to your enemy. My God. Ooh, this word is right here. This is prophetic. Because God needs to be an enemy to your enemies. You, many of you, you have so many enemies battling against you. And you need God to stand on in. He said, and I will oppose those who oppose you. For my angel will go before you and bring you into the land of the Amorites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Canaanites, the Hivites, the Jebusites, so that you will live there. And I will destroy them completely, destroy all of your enemies. Hallelujah. That is Exodus 23, 20 through 23. Somebody put that up. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. I know, I know. I, I was like, Lord, do I get my husband to go get the book right while well, I'm kind of flowing? But that scripture, I, I couldn't quote it by heart, but that scripture was coming before me. Y'all, even as I look around last night when we went out on our land, and I was like, my God, I was looking. This was like one of the first times that I looked at my property in the dark, and it was just gorgeous and beautiful. And I'm like, God, you did all of this. You did. But I will say that there were angels that they came to help us they was like do this say this let me help, help. God told me he told me years ago he said when you start talking about them angels they're gonna be even I just felt one touch me Danita my God that wolf angel just showed up mm. He said, there are going to be people. He said, even in the body of Christ, they're going to laugh at you. They're going to mock you. But one thing that they will know is my hand is on your life. And even as they laugh, they're going to say something, is, something. She might be crazy, but God's hand is on her life. Uh, I'm telling you what I know. As I look around on my property, my land, I was a little black girl from Norfolk, Virginia, living in parvish conditions. My mom was a single mom, raising three children during that time by herself when my father and her left. I seen what poverty looked like, but I also know what breakthrough looks like and it feels like. Oh, we got to press in. God wants to send the angels to help you. Please pay careful attention to the instructions that have been will bring before you amen that's the word of the lord if you're not saved we want you to get saved i'm gonna pull up the scripture my god we want you to get saved he's doing something he's staring yes he's staring yes he's staring i believe some angels was dis dis was dispatched and they are ministering to people even now the Bible says in Romans 10, verse 9, it says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. This is for those of you who are not saved, or maybe those of you who are in a backslidden state. Come on and repent. Get it right. He says, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. Come on and give him your life. Father, I repent of sin, and I ask you to come into my heart. Jesus, I know that Jesus is the way. I need you, Jesus. I need you to help me and, and get into the word and get into prayer. It is very simple, and he looks at the heart. He is an examiner of the heart. I was talking to another woman of God last night on the phone. We were talking about he looks at the heart. 
examiner of the heart. Amen. Amen. God loves you so much. And so you all be encouraged. A lot of people it was asking so many questions about fasting. Y'all, just, just follow the Holy Spirit. If you feel like when something told me, it's the, it's the Spirit of God dealing and working with you. Amen. Amen. God bless you. I pray for you. I do. I do. I do. I do. I want to see God's people come out. I do. I know what it's like to be in bondage, especially financial bondage, but I also know what it's like to break through in some areas. So we love you so much. Thank you so much, Danita. It's been a joy ministering with my sister this morning because normally you get Aisha and I on Mondays and then Danita um, and Tiana is on Wednesday and then we all come together. But before we get off, Danita, share with them about your conference. That's right. Let me go to your page. You can talk about it while I pull your page up. The flyer yes, on your that is just we get off. Yeah, that's another thing, y'all. I'm just excited um, what God is doing in this season. And um, God gave me Mindset Reset um, probably a few months ago as I was in my prayer closet. And basically what, what Holy Spirit is saying is that people need to change their mindsets in order for them to be able to do the things that God has called them to. Um, and so the conference is all things entrepreneurship. But you know that we are marketplace ministers. So you're going to get practical teaching, but you're also going to get spiritual teaching. And my beautiful sister has um, agreed to be the keynote speaker. And I know that she is going to have a word for you guys. We even have um, Tiana Von Johnson. She's the millionaire brand strategist. So she's going to do a whole training. Um, the training is like 90 minutes, y'all for how to um, get your brand out there, just to be um, successful, a millionaire brand strategist. And then my beautiful sister, Nakia Tolbert, she is a certified mental health coach. Listen, because you gotta have your mind right, y'all. A lot of us are um, carrying childhood trauma, carrying things um, that will hinder us um, to be able to do these things that God has called us to. And I believe this is the words that my beautiful sister Lanika said, if you don't deal with the childhood trauma, it will deal with you. So it'll come back up in the way that you, in your relationships and the way that you do business in everything. And those things, we want to break those things off so that we can be free and we can do everything that God has called us to. And in this season, People are going to look at us and say, who is the God that you serve? Because I want to serve him as well, because I see how his glory is flowing through your life. So I'm excited. Y'all get your tickets. Um, the, the link is there. You could go to my page. It's going to be amazing. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So thanks again for those of you who've gotten on. We'll be um, back on the prayer 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Wednesday. But I will also be going live from my page tomorrow night. I don't even know what time it is yet. I'll see um, maybe around 8 o'clock. Um, but just check in. Y'all know I'll be posting it on Facebook, the time and everything. So love you all. You all have a beautiful day. Bye-bye.